Welcome to Autosport International 2020 for the 70th anniversary of Autosport magazine. Now, we've gone through some classic cars while we've been here, and here's one from just over a decade ago, the 2009 Braun Grand Prix. At the start of 2009, a brand new set of aerodynamics regulations were taking place. Now, Giorgio Piola is with me. Giorgio, 2009, huge overhaul in the aero regulations. What do you remember from the time? Honestly, I have to remember that for me, the, the most emotional and revolutionary car was the Red Bull RB5 because it had some completely new concept. Unfortunately for Adrian Newey, that was a, a little bit upset about this, this car has a, a solution that nobody had before. The, what it was called the double diffuser. And the intention of the Federation was to put a big limit to the diffuser. But Ross Braun found a, a hole in the regulation and they create in the back a kind of double diffuser. And this was a massive advantage compared to everybody. And when Red Bull introduced the double diffuser in Monaco, they start winning. But thank God for Braun GP, all the winning were to Jenson Button, so they did uh, split the points between him and Barrichello, and this car was a world champion. But apart the double diffuser, there was nothing so dramatically driven. Apart except uh, one solution, this splitter that was introduced by this car and then copied by other cars. So at the end, it was a very efficient, very reliable car with this clever and if you want uh, a little bit uh, over the limit uh, solution of the double diffuser. But it was also a little bit of a halfway house as well, wasn't it? Because it was originally a Honda design and they shoehorned the Mercedes engine into it. From the time, do you think if they'd had the Honda engine, it would have been quite as competitive or was it thanks to that Mercedes, do you think? It's hard to say because again, uh, as for example, with the Lotus 79, uh, the, the big secret was the ground effect uh, and at the end the car didn't have a, a wonderful chassis from the point of, of stiffness, didn't have a wonderful braking and the year after Williams immediately they did better. This car, the, the biggest uh, advantage was the double diffuser. So I believe that any kind of engine would have been successful. And also finally one of the innovations it also brought was quite dramatic outwash front wing end plates as well. We see that on so many Formula One cars now. Quite a few cars at the time didn't have it. For example, McLaren, they had in washing. So yes, you are right. And it's nice to, to point it out because it's very important. And as we can see, it's done in a very dramatic way because it's even much more than now. And that was the first example. Also splitting the end plate in two pieces like this with this big outwash was something totally innovative.